Good morning all. Today I thought I'd dig out uh, an old project and that's the penny organ which consists of an Arduino, uh, a touch sensor, this is a 12 input touch switch connected through to these coins and uh, four digitally controlled oscillators, four DCOs, uh, the four analog outputs of which go into this little mixer board. It's just a, a bit of Vera board with four resistors on and a capacitor and then that feeds into uh, this active speaker, the one with the, uh, the big uh, passive membranes on the sides. So as it stands, uh, not only can you play simple scales, but you can also play chords or whoops or and of course uh, because it's got four oscillators you can play four tones simultaneously and we wrote into the Arduino a simple uh, oscillator allocation system first come first served so that when you press a key it allocates it to the first oscillator if you press two keys then the first two oscillators are in use and so on. Now if you're thinking that this would make a good module for a modular synthesizer then yes I agree. Uh, this is a very accurate, because each of these uh, DCOs has a crystal on it, it's a very accurate tone generator. Currently these are set to sine wave, uh, although you can set them to triangle wave as well. Uh, the only thing this doesn't have, it doesn't have any form of envelope shaping, so the notes come in hard and they disappear hard. There's no gentle rise and gentle fall. Uh, the other thing you get of course is a click. both on the start of the tone and at the end, and that's because these oscillators uh, produce this sine wave. I suppose I should do it this way, really. Uh, but they don't really care where the sine wave ends. They don't wait until the sine wave reaches the zero crossing point, the midpoint, so that next time you play it, you don't get a click. They just stop and leave the uh, analog level at whatever it last was. So yeah, it's a bit clicky. But uh, that doesn't matter if I'm going to feed this in to another device which does have envelope shaping and, well, the vocoder does exactly that. So yes, the whole uh, raison d'etre of this thing, or the, the, its purpose, is going to be as an input source for the vocoder so that I can play uh, the speech uh, played at different pitches or with chords. Well, three note chords, that sounds a bit out of tune, doesn't it? Uh, possibly because these are equal temperament, not just intonation. Now, one of the reasons I've dug this out is because I noticed it's got a bit of a fault on it. Uh, if you play a single note, it doesn't sound quite pure sign. Now, if you press one note, of course, it's using the first DCO, digitally controlled oscillator. So if I make uh, the sound come from the second oscillator, which I can do like this, you can hear that that's a very pure sine wave. If I let go and press it again, it's coming from the first oscillator. So that makes it come from the second oscillator. That sounds pure sine. That's coming from the first oscillator and it sounds brighter, like it's got more harmonics. Let me try some other notes. You can hear the second press is brighter. That's a sign. And that's a sign but with additional harmonics. So there's something wrong with this first oscillator. And uh, the, I think the only way I'm going to find out what it is is to take a look on the oscilloscope. Right, I've got the oscilloscope uh, hooked up uh, really just directly across the, uh, the connections that are going to the active speaker. And there's masses of noise on here, uh, high frequency noise, I think, because if I turn the time base up, I can't start seeing really what this noise is until I'm right up at the nanosecond region. So there's masses of high frequency noise there. If I play a tone, yes, I can get a sine wave. It's difficult to trigger because there's so much noise on the signal that I'm getting multiple ups and downs and it's 
triggering twice per wave. So that's not really telling me uh, why the difference between, let's try the, the sign and its noisy cousin. I'm not really seeing the difference on the scope because there's just so much noise on there. I was just wondering whether it would be possible to hear the background noise. So I'll put the speaker right next to the microphone on my camera, my phone. Not sure if that's coming through, but that's the background level of noise coming from this active speaker. Right, so what I've done now is I've isolated the first oscillator and I'm looking on the scope only at uh, ground and signal coming out of there. So if I press a penny on the... Uh, organ you can see it on the scope and immediately you can see that there's something a bit funny going on there it's clean at the bottom of the sine wave but very jaggedy near the top uh, subsequent presses of course trigger the the other oscillators and they're still fed through the speaker um, but yeah that's uh, c d e and you can see the frequency that's me accidentally pressing two notes but you can see the frequency increasing but yeah, it's got a noisy top. So what I need to do now is move uh, this wire onto the second oscillator and see what that looks like. Right, so this is now looking at the second oscillator. I've put the first oscillator back into the audio mixer. So you can hear the first oscillator and the second one you'll see. And that's completely pure. Actually, let me disconnect that first oscillator because it's a bit distracting. So now you won't see either the first or the second, but look at the second oscillator, that's completely clean. Uh, let's try different frequencies on that oscillator. Yeah, that's got a completely clean sine wave without all that horrible noisy top. So it looks like there's something wrong with the first oscillator on its um, on the top of its peaks, but not at the bottom of its peaks. I also notice when I uh, let go of the oscillator, notice the positions it stops. Here it stopped near the top, there it stopped mm, sort of near the bottom-ish, there it stopped right at the bottom and it just happens where you happen to catch the sine wave when you let go of the oscillator and switch it off, um, where it leaves the analog level. That's near the bottom, that's near the bottom, and that's right up at the top. So that explains why um, those clicks appear when you, uh, I think I've pressed three notes now to make that happen. Those clicks appear when you uh, press and let go of a key. Uh, so back on the first tone generator, the oscillator again. And again, you can see that the tops of those peaks, I'll just get in a bit closer in a minute, but uh, yeah, they're very ragged. And I just thought of a temporary fix because I'm not sure whether I'm going to be able to actually repair these uh, AD9833, I think they are, uh, DCO modules. I'm going to have a look at it, but um, I think what I'll do is order another one. But while that's coming, I think I'll move that first oscillator to the fourth position. And then you'll only get this uh, noisy sine wave if you press a four note chord. Three note chords should be completely pure. Uh, so here's a slightly closer look at the sine wave on the scope and there's clearly something wrong with the top of it. This oscilloscope is just the worst oscilloscope for filming. It's so difficult to get a good image off it, but uh, yeah, there's clearly a problem there. Uh, subsequent tone generators are fine. So that first one's coming out and it's going into the fourth position. Actually, it's just occurred to me, of course, that rather than physically move it, I can simply reorder um, these connectors. And in fact, that would help slightly because um, the first tone generator I've done on the lowest number connector, which happens to be quite close to it, the fourth tone generator is the furthest away connector. So that wire is at quite a stretch. So if I just reorder these four select lines, these are in effect the chip enable lines for the four oscillators. And these two signals are just clock and data for, uh, I think it's very similar to SPI, it's just a serial data. So I'll leave those, reorder these four, and that'll do the job. Oh, how sensible am I? Look, I used black, brown, red, and orange for zero, one, two, and three, so I can yank those out and uh, flip them round. 
so black, brown, red and orange uh, they must go that way and uh, yeah that's done it because the first, second, third first, second and third notes are all now clear pure sine waves and only when you press the fourth do I get that noisy one which isn't fed into the mixer yet so I'll just add that back into the mixer and uh, see what it sounds like. Of course by the time you've got three notes the fourth note uh, is going to be barely audible above the racket from the first three. So that should act as a temporary fudge fix. Uh, so yeah, I think that's uh, just good enough for the time being. You can still hear it if I play a three note chord. Uh, and then a fourth note. You can hear that that fourth note is bright. That of course is pure sign because it's allocating the first oscillator, uh, which is now over there. Um, it's only when you have the fourth note in. Let's try it from the top end down. So these are the noisy ones. Um, yeah, I think that'll do for the time being. I can play three note chords without the problem. That'll do, I think. So moving on from this point, I've only got eight notes here, uh, so I haven't got all 12 semitones uh, in an octave. I'm going to add in the other four notes using bronze coins to get uh, C sharp. Uh, I can't remember what they are, but the other four notes will be bronze coins. Uh, so I've got room to fit those in up there. And then I'm going to have another one of these touch sensor modules. So I've got to try and cram that in somehow. Maybe I'll turn those round or something, I don't know. To uh, allocate these uh, Norwegian krona and they're going to be for major, minor, seventh and other chord variations so that you can just press a note and it will play a, a complete four note chord and then you can major it, minor it, actually maybe major will be the default, press that and it will minor it, that will seventh it, that will ninth it and whatever the other options are. So that's where I'm going to take these next, I need to find some bronze coloured coins that have holes in them, I think I've got some. So uh, that's the penny organ with its uh, four oscillators so that you can produce two note chords or even uh, three note chords if you can get your fingers on the right keys. Um, so yes, this is going to be very much an input for the vocoder. So these two projects will work side by side. Cheerio.